Russia has lost at least 130 tanks and armored personnel carriers in a three-week battle in the town of Vuladar in southern Ukraine. According to Ukrainian officials, this was the biggest tank battle of the war so far. This defeat is also the last major link in a chain of failures that has been going on for the Russians since the beginning of the war. According to US officials, Russia has likely lost half of its main battle tanks, if not more, during the fighting in Ukraine. Most sources agree that since the beginning of the invasion, the Ukrainians destroyed or captured more than 1,600 T-72s. To put the situation in perspective, this figure is considerably higher than the entire tank force of Greece. Russia's tanks were once seen as fearsome, formidable threats. So, what is happening? At the beginning of the war, Russia staged equipment for nearly 100 battalion tactical groups along Ukraine's borders. BTGs are task-organized motorized rifle or tank battalion plus-sized combat entities that can perform semi-independent combined arms combat missions. These units generally consist of a large number of armored vehicles and a small number of infantry troops. The lack of sufficient infantry support or protection led to columns of Russian tanks moving straight into Ukrainian ambushes. The Russian Air Force's inability to maintain dominance in Ukraine exacerbates the situation. Without effective air support, Ukrainian small combat units can move to positions where they can attack Russian convoys, taking advantage of the terrain they are familiar with. And these agile combat units are equipped with West's most advanced anti-tank systems. Let's look at some of their weapons and how they choose to use them. According to a report published in 2022, the United States provided Ukraine with 8,500 FGM-148 Javelins. The FGM-148 Javelin is a state-of-the-art portable fire-and-forget anti-tank system that can lock onto and hit moving targets from a distance of 8,200 feet or 2,500 meters. Unlike previously guided missiles, the operator can safely leave the area or take cover after launch without having to keep the crosshairs on the target. This anti-tank weapon is highly effective against heavy tanks due to its top attack mode. The weapon's launch unit is so advanced that it can be used independently for observation purposes. The outstanding performance of St. Javelin comes at a cost. That is $197,884 a missile, according to the U.S. Army's missile procurement budget for 2023. However, the kill rate of up to 90% and the fact that it eliminates a multi-million dollar tank in just one shot justifies this cost. One of the major contributors to Russia's desperate situation is the Saab Bofors Dynamics, designed and law. The 28-pound munition, designed to target main battle tanks, has a predicted line-of-sight targeting capability that allows an operator to track and engage a target in seconds. Being significantly more cost-effective than Javelin, this missile is only about $33,000 per shot. However, the range is much shorter at 3,280 feet or 1,000 meters, and Enlaw's 4-pound warhead is far less effective than the FGM-148 Javelin's 19-pound warhead. Still, the Enlaw system is accounted for about 30 to 40 percent of Russian tank losses, according to Ukrainian forces. From the start of the invasion, Ukraine's locally manufactured Stugna P anti-tank missile was acclaimed for its effectiveness. It is an anti-tank system from a previous generation that requires a three-person crew. The launcher and missile together weigh more than 60 pounds. The missile is guided by the operator. At its maximum range, the projectile takes nearly half a minute to hit a target at its maximum range of 3.1 miles, or 5 kilometers. This system costs around $20,000 a shot, one-tenth of a javelin, a relatively small price tag when you consider that it killed many tanks and, on at least two occasions, downed Russian helicopters. The battle for Bakhmut remains the most intense along the front line, where new Ukrainian squads have been spotted on Humvees outfitted with Raytheon's BGM-71 tow missiles. The tow missile, as the name suggests, is tube-launched and optically tracked. It is a wire-guided missile that is manually steered toward its target by the operator. It is the nearest equivalent to the Stugna P. This weapon system was developed by the U.S. Army during the Cold War to destroy Soviet armor, and now it is devastating Russian armor in Ukraine. These missiles were budgeted for $79,000 each in 2020. Tow anti-tank missiles are more lethal than Javelin, Stugna's, or Enlaw anti-tank missiles as they can penetrate up to 35-inch or 900 millimeters of RHA, rolled homogenous armor. So, with what tactics do the Ukrainians use these weapons in the field? Mostly, it goes like this. 
The lead vehicles of a Russian column were frequently heavily armored tanks. As a result, the Ukrainians used more advanced weapons with a higher kill probability to hit these tanks to ensure that the entire column came to a halt. Once a column was mobilized, Ukrainian forces could engage and destroy the vehicles sandwiched between the immobilized front and rear vehicles with less expensive weapons like AT-4s and RPG-7s. These tactics, which the Ukrainians have used successfully since the beginning of the war, have resulted in massive losses of tanks and light armored vehicles for the Russians. To cope with the losses in the field, the Russians are forced to send their older tanks to the front, which have been sitting in warehouses for many years without maintenance. The 70-year-old T-55s were said to be on their way to the front lines after the T-62s. In a direct clash with better-equipped Ukrainian forces, the four-man crew of a T-55 could survive for… minutes. Losing tanks is one thing, losing trained tank crews is another thing together. The Russians lost a devastating percentage of their experienced soldiers, the most valuable asset an army could have in the first months of the war, due to tactical and strategic errors that demonstrated that they were unprepared for this type of war. In the upcoming phase of the war, they will have to fight against highly experienced, motivated, and well-equipped Ukrainian forces with inexperienced soldiers and older technology weapons. We're talking about the M1A1 Abrams versus the T-55. This will be a massacre, not a fight. The Russian concept of quantity having its quality is about to face its most difficult test yet. 